Rocky Jones, Space Rangers, Space Rangers, Space Rangers, starring Richard Crane. In Vena and the Darnamo. Pickup on Visiograph, Rocky. Good. We'll refuel. Get the job done. We'll head back to Earth as fast as possible. This is a silver moon to a space station OW9. Rocky Jones to Clark. Come in, Clark. Welcome back, Rocky. Turn port side a bit, Rocky. Let me have a look at the silver moon. Well, are you bent, busted, or just plain clobbered as usual? We're in pretty good shape, Clark. We're coming in for a fast refuel, and we'll be on our way. I'll notify Secretary Drake. Destination Earth, Rocky? Of course, but uh, via our little detour. Bring us in, Clark. Out. We'll call and out, Rocky. Vina, Bobby, secure blast off belts. We're in the OW-9's magnetic field. Hi, Clark. Hi, Space Stranger. Well, where's all the damage? I can't understand it. A one-shot fight, Clark, and it was ours. Navigation report. Silver Moon arrived overdue at Space Station OW9. And will be long overdue arriving on Earth. What is all this? Where are you going, Vina? I'll let Rocky tell you. Rocky. Hello, Clark. Hi, Biff. Clark. It's nice to see you. Your uh, refuel team at work? Yeah. Hey, Rocky, I haven't got authority like Secretary Drake, but I've got curiosity like nobody else. Where are you going? Mandora. And... Mandora? <laughs> what is that? What do you mean? You mean that little speck in the universe? Yeah, that little speck, Clark. And Rocky says you're going there. But what is it the Space Rangers say about Mandora? Uninviting, uninhabited, and unfriendly, uh, if you ever get there. Why, it's only a pinpoint of the universe, Rocky. Well, you see, we landed on Apollo Minor for supplies. I met an old-time space pilot, a, a contraband runner, I'm sure, but it wasn't our job to question him. And they became the best of buddies. He told me about being lost in space and landing on Mandora. Of course, when he realized where he was, he blasted off as soon as possible. But there's one thing he brought back with him. Huh? Uh, what, Rocky? Show him. All right. <laughs> Looks like an umbrella. That's what it is. And it came from Andorra. Well, it's a... It's a museum piece. Yeah, from Mandora. Made in Cincinnati. Now that's a signal from the refuel team, Rocky. They've they've finished. Good. Well, we're on our way. Secure blast off belts. <laughs> Pull point oh two relative to Earth, sir. 
Oxygen reading a satisfactory 24% by weight, 20% by volume. Temperature reading 88 degrees, slightly above normal, probably because of our landing rockets. Sounds wonderful. Let's have a look around. All right. Rocky, I didn't finish. The climate is arid. This is a parasol. I want to keep the sun off my head. To me, it's still a bumper shoot. Rocky, put it down. That means bad luck. <laughs> history, back in the days of the Roman Empire, there was a slave named Androcles, and there was a lion in pain. Well, Androcles took a thorn out of its paw, and the lion never forgot. Sometime later, the lion had a chance to save Androcles' life. And he did? And he did. That's what I like, a nice, grateful lion with a long memory, but behind strong bars. That's funny. Yeah. Hey, look. Looks somewhat alike. Maybe Rocky's got something there with his umbrella. But it still doesn't explain Cincinnati. Well, the man I saw as an example of the natives here on Mandora, we can check this off as a wasted trip. Yeah, Rocky, I can't imagine him wearing rubbers and carrying an umbrella. I think we can pretty well assume that I uh, fell for a tall tale. But Rocky, what about the umbrella handle and the animal we saw? Coincidence, Bobby. A lot of animals could look like that. I suggest a survey for a geographical report to Drake and then be on our way. The shorter the survey, the better, sir. <laughs>
Bobby, but it's worse than the howl of a Martian mammal. Get back to the ship. Hey, Rocky, I got one, too. Hurry, be careful. I've suddenly lost interest in geography for Drake. If you want a complete geography of Mandora. Bina, what is it? The umbrella. It's gone. What? Hey, there's someone in there. Well, the exit switch is off. They can't get out. Rocky, they're breaking up the instruments. The controls. Bina, Bobby, get back over there out of the way. I'm going in fast, but follow me. Yes, sir. Like you saw a ghost. Well, young man, it's about time you brought back my umbrella. My granddaddy thought the sun rose and set in Jules Verne. He always said that science was merely a matter of putting into action what the great Verne put into words. What a caution he was to the Dokington family. Yes, and to the O'Briens. Oh, you mean the uh, doctor, Quinn J. O'Brien, right, Miss Pilkington? Yes, from Cincinnati. Rocky, how could you possibly know that? Uh, uh, later. Yes, indeed. What a caution he must have been. He read 20,000 leagues under the sea and built a submarine. Couldn't get it to the bottom of the mill pond. And then you read Trip to the Moon. Just wait until I catch up with that Jules Verne in the hereafter. Professor Cyrus Pilkington was a great man, Miss Pilkington. Hey, Rocky. I remember reading about Cyrus Pilkington, a scientist who lived many years ago. Professor Crackpot in his scatterbrained sky wagon. Oh, the police tried to stop him, but uh, Professor Pilkington and his wife, and Dr. O'Brien and his wife, managed to hide the sky wagon someplace. And uh, that's the last time anyone ever heard of them. So I've been told. Of course, Daddy, Cyrus Pilkington Jr., and Mama, Sarah O'Brien, weren't even born then. Let me fix supper. Oh, dear, I wish I'd known company was going to drop in. The last one got away, and with my umbrella. May I help? 
talk to Miss Dorkington? Oh, thank you, dearie. But I don't like another woman messing around my kitchen. I'll never get used to them. What did you call them? Door animals. Vicious animals. But they look something like a dog. And like the handle on your umbrella. Why, of course. My grandmother, Lula Bell, bought the umbrella in Cincinnati because it looked like one of her dogs. Well, that's what happened to them. She should have left them at home. Granddaddy Cyrus hated them. Even the first two. They jumped all over him and he'd shout, Down, animals, down. That's where the natives got the name for them. They're scared to death of the darn animals, and I don't blame them. I run a little business here on Mandora. You don't mind if I catch up while dinner's cooking? Of course not. A circulating library, she's just the type. Oh, what kind of a business, Miss Turkington? I make slingshot. Isn't this one a peach? Oh, a renegade, huh? Arming the natives. <laughs> That's a good one. I like a joke. I've been wanting to ask you, what happened to the Indians? The natives don't know that I ran out of gunpowder 30 years ago. Cut you into the pieces. But me, I'm their Mandora de Speranda. Right, well, translated, that means beautiful white goddess. Where's my umbrella? Beth. Yes, Rocky. Smoking's going outside. Cover in case of trouble. I'll take the window in there. Unusual. Make it just as comfy as you can until morning. What is it, Miss Pilkent? Those silly, superstitious natives. They think you're coming here, but the dog's on the prowl. They want me to surrender one of you as sacrifice. Oh, dear. Well, don't worry. In the morning, when the Dynamos go, they'll go too.
hear what your Rocky Jones says. I know these natives, and we'd better get going. It's all right. I want you all to say uh, hello to Miss uh, Andy. <laughs> Miss Andy? Oh, sure, I get it. Miss Andrew Cleese and the Lion. <laughs> so much for the invitation, but really, I'd better not go. Oh, please, Miss Pilkington. Yes, Miss Pilkington. You're a woman. You'll understand. Here on Mandora, I'm a beautiful goddess. But back on Earth, I'd be just another old lady. <laughs> Besides, I have a job to do here for the natives. And I don't mean slingshots. <laughs> I wish you would change your mind, Mrs. Pilkington. Miss Pilkington, please. Oh, yes, I'm sorry. You're sorry. <laughs> <laughs> when we again take you into outer space for further adventures with Rocky Jones, Space Rangers.